So Pete Dunne and Finn Balor had a hell of a wrestling match where I never had any doubt about who was going to win. And I, if you if you had not seen any of the build to this and never watched NXT in your life, you just watched this match, you'd have no idea who was supposed to be the good guy and the bad guy. They just beat the hell out of each other for a long time. Yes. There was a point where Finn went for the coup de grace and Pete caught him in a triangle choke. And Amazing. it looked cool. And Finn's fighting for the ropes and fighting for the ropes and fighting for the ropes. And he gets them as he passes out. So... Fine. Bullshit. Yeah, you have to let go of the hold. Dude. But then the referee makes Pete wait. I loved I loved this match. Okay. I may, after the show is over, go watch this match again. Mm -hmm. But are you fucking kidding me? You're telling me that you can die <laughs> in a match uh -huh. and as long as you're in the ropes, the match continues. Apparently. This fucking guy was unconscious in the ropes, and the ref's like, hold on, Pete. Bros in the ropes. That's ridiculous. Well, I mean, one thing, if he... It's not so much the breaking of the hold, because the referee didn't know he was unconscious until the hold was broken, right? The mm -hmm. problem is, when Pete went to follow him up, the ref held him back and said, no, I know you've killed him, but now we must revive him, so you have to kill him again. <laughs> and in the, end, in the end, he never killed him again. I he mean, lost. if you put a guy to hold, and he goes unconscious in the ropes... You're not going to let him drag the guy to the ring to pin him? We have to wait till he's revived? I, that's what happened. Anyway, this was really dumb. I liked, I loved this match. Absolutely loved this match, but that spot was dumb. Yes. Pete selling his knee was tremendous. He tried to yep. run and couldn't. Yep. He didn't do a flashy comeback with he his tried to do a, knee. He, he tried to do a flip and couldn't. Yes. His, his knee took him out of his game. And then when he finally had a chance, finally, by the making a comeback and had a chance to snap Finn's fingers, now Finn couldn't use his hand right, and so the fingers and the hand and the knee all played in, everything played out after that. So finally, uh, Finn turns a bitter end into a spike reverse DDT, which gets a two count. Dunn is still able to hold onto the fingers to stop him from doing anything else, but... Finn somehow yanks the mouthpiece out of Pete's mouth, of course, kicks him in the mouth, hits a coup de grace at a 1916 and wins a great, great wrestling match that I was not emotionally invested in. I thought the match was awesome. I mean, what I really missed was a crowd because I thought that this was one of those matches where you would have had the most fantastic dueling chance throughout the match and you would have had mm -hmm. so yes, probably. much heat. But because we're, we, I mean, there, there are always a few fans there, but largely you've got the fake, this is awesome chance. You've got the fake booing for Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn is torturing Finn Balor, and yes. he's not doing anything illegal. He's just totally out wrestling this guy, who, by the way, is not even really a baby face. He's kind of like a tweener. He is a they tweener. They haven't figured out what they're doing with this fucking guy. So when you're torturing that guy, why are we piping in loud boos? It kind of took me out of the match. Like, the yeah. guy's doing nothing wrong. I'm just seeing, like, a great display of torture here from on one man on another. And I could have I could see crowds chanting for Pete and then half the crowds chanting for Finn. It would have been so great. But, I mean, there's nothing you could do about it. But I guess there is something you could do about it. Not so much of the uh, uh, forcing of these reactions from the fake crowd. I didn't need that in this match. But wrestling-wise... I mean, these guys are so awesome, yep. and I'm kind of sad that they did the match, they did the clean, decisive finish, and then we did the angle afterwards, because quite frankly, like, I don't think we're going to get a rematch, nope. and I, I would have loved to have seen a rematch, but such bad. is life. So they did the angle afterwards, which is Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch appear, and they team up with their friend Pete to beat the hell out of Finn Balor. Until Undisputed Era makes a save, and it's Cole and O'Reilly and Strong. And they clean house, and they bring Finn up to his feet. And Finn, you can just tell from the body language and, and who's talking to you, Finn trusts Kyle. And he's trusting uh, Adam and Roddy only because they're Kyle's friends. So they all do their pose together, and the UE throws up the UE hand gestures and Finn does the finger guns, and the graphic is on the screen, copyright 2021, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly Adam Cole, that bastard, super kicks Finn Balor right in his bad jaw. 
And down goes Finn. And Roddy is outraged. And Kyle is outraged. And Kyle gets in Adam's face. And so Adam drops him with a super kick, too. Roddy's beside himself. He's very conflicted. He doesn't know what to do. And Cole never even looked at Roddy. He just backed up, like, almost backed up into him and passed him and made his way up the ramp. And Roddy was left frozen, undecided about what to do next, staring at the two bodies down to the ring. So... What I would assume this would lead to is for Mania Weekend, uh, Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly in the the well, one of those feuds that just never, ever, ever ends, <laughs> crosses various promotions, and it's finally going to happen here in NXT. Uh, I would assume we would get Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor for the NXT title. I don't know what to do with Roddy then. Well, we don't know. He doesn't know what's going on either. He was confused really? as the yes. show ended. So, And Bobby Fish was nowhere to be seen. That's right. So I don't know what happened to that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it's high time that we that we did this here. And I guess if they're going to go with Karrion Cross, that's fine. I mean, you also, you could go Cole Balor, which would be like fantastic matches. Yeah. But, dude, like I said in the Kushida match, we need some new faces here. Like, yeah. I would have been totally fine with Pete Dunne winning the title. And you have Pete Dunne, Pat McAfee as the mouthpiece, and Lorkin and Birch. That would have been an awesome crew. Yes. And then you could have had uh, Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly feuding with Cole and Strong. They could do a tag team program there. You could even get the tag belts involved. There's a lot of different things you could do, but I do think that we need some... We need to get some new people in the title picture. Mm-hmm. It just feels like we're the show's not doing great, and it's the same guys in those positions. And I think we need some new guys, especially with all the talent they have here, for crying out loud. Got a million guys in NXT. It's the same guys on top. But wrestling-wise, the show was awesome. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.